Today we're putting two of Samsung's largest phones head to head, seeing if their latest device is enough to triumph last year's Note 5. Hello everybody, it's Crystal Laura, and this is a Galaxy S7 Edge versus the Galaxy Note 5. Both the S7 Edge and Note 5 are large phones, but with the height of the top and bottom bezels, of course the 5.7 inch screen on the Note 5 makes for an overall bigger phone than the 5.5 inch S7 Edge. The Note 5 is almost 3mm taller than the S7 and also 5mm wider, so you'll need to stretch a little further on the Note 5 when trying to use it one handed. Both phones have Gorilla Glass 4 on the back, creating a very elegant design, although this year the S7 Edge seems to have taken a page out of the the Note 5's book with this glass curving on the sides. Samsung says these back curves help with grip and even comfort when holding, and it really is the case, especially on the S7 Edge where there's a lot less frame to hold onto. Both of our phones here are the dark models, black sapphire on the Note 5 and black onyx on the S7 Edge. However, while the Note 5 is a little more blue, the S7 Edge is a more true black, which I think helps it make it look a little more sleek. Another design change that I love is that the shiny silver accents that can be found on the Note 5 have not been carried onto the S7 Edge. Instead, we have black borders and a darker, less reflective frame. And of course, thanks to the S7 Edge's 1mm thicker body, the camera protrudes just a little less. All of these little changes definitely make the S7 Edge have a bit more of an advantage when it comes to a visually pleasing phone. But of course, we haven't even talked about the main difference here, and that is the curved display of the S7 Edge. The side bezels on the Note 5 are pretty slim to begin with, but on the S7 Edge, they are almost non-existent. The left and right sides of the display curve a little to meet the frame, creating a display that appears to be embossed. Even with the screen off, the extra reflections the curved glass creates makes for a very beautiful, futuristic looking phone. And when putting the phone side by side, there is no competition in terms of beauty. The S7 Edge makes the Note 5 look like it came out years ago. While we're on the topic of displays, let's dive into the specs of both phone screens. Samsung is using the same type of display technology here, with their Super AMOLED panels, as well as the same resolution of Quad HD. And of course, with the Note 5 having a larger display, this creates for less pixels per inch, actually making the S7 Edge's display slightly sharper, but these differences pretty much go unnoticed. These displays are the best on the market right now, although there's a pretty big difference in terms of color reproduction here. The S7 Edge's display appears to be a little warmer than the Note 5's, and whether that's a good or bad thing, it's mostly up to preference. The Note 5 does get a little brighter than the S7 Edge as well, so when outdoors, the Note 5 is going to be a lot easier to see. Another difference comes with most phones once they surpass that 5.5 inch screen mark, and that's DPI. With the Note 5 having a larger screen, Samsung gave the phone a DPI of 560, allowing for smaller text and icons, which allows for more information on the screen. The S7 Edge's display is just a tad smaller, yet the DPI is set at 640, which cuts off a lot of information that you will be able to see on the Note 5. The curved size of the S7 Edge though really makes this display feel like something from the future. And when using the Note 5 after using the S7 Edge for a while, you feel as though there's a quite distance between the glass you touch and the actual screen below it. But overall, I really do enjoy the cooler tint of the Note 5 and the brighter screen, and along with the lower DPI, the Note 5 may still be better technically speaking. With all Samsung phones, we have capacitive navigation buttons instead of on-screen ones, including a physical home button. This physical home button does double as a fingerprint scanner, and it's a very good one. These scanners are not the fastest ones found on phones, but they are very fast and very reliable. Thanks to the S7 Edge's extra processing power, you'll be able to scan and unlock the phone ever so slightly faster than the Note 5. Both phones have the same speaker placed on the bottom of the phone, which is unfortunate because it's very easy to cover up and is pointed away from you. The speaker itself isn't too bad, it's not great, it can be a little tinny, but it can get pretty loud. However, on the S7 Edge, the speaker is a bit quieter and a little more weaker in sound overall. But that's because behind the speaker is a protective coating because the S7 Edge is IP68 certified water resistant. The S7 Edge can survive up to 30 minutes and 1.5 meters of water. So surviving rainy days or accidental drops into the sink is no problem. Whereas if you do this on the Note 5, you're gonna end up having to buy a new one. 
Now perhaps the biggest disappointment with the Note 5 was the removal of the SD card slot, but with the S7 Edge, Samsung listened to us and found a way to keep this beautiful glass device and add an SD card slot. So now you can add photos, songs, and movies up to 200 gigs for very cheap instead of purchasing a different model of the phone for an expensive price tag. The Note 5 does have one feature though that the S7 Edge does not and that is the S Pen. Pulling this pen out from the bottom of the phone can open up a whole world of features making getting work done a lot faster and easier. You can easily drop down notes, crop areas of images, circle things, and draw diagrams if you need to. And sure, not everybody needs an S Pen, but depending on your line of work, the S Pen feature alone may be worth getting the Note 5 over the S7 Edge. The S7 Edge sports the new Qualcomm Snapdragon 820, while the Note 5 has the Exynos 7420. Adreno 530 versus Mali T760 GPU, with both phones having 4 gigs of RAM. Since these processors and GPUs come from different manufacturers, I ran both phones through some benchmarking apps to see where they rank to one another. Geekbench scored the S7 Edge slightly high, while N22 put the S7 Edge way ahead. The majority of the time, the S7 Edge will open apps a second faster than the Note 5 while having a bit better RAM management as well. Apps tend to read load less and although still not perfect, it's a lot better. But oddly enough, the Note 5 loads power hungry games a few seconds faster. But once the game starts, you'll notice less frame drops on the S7 Edge. The difference is very minuscule though and you'll have a great time playing games on either phone. But with the S7 Edge, Samsung has introduced a new gaming mode that disables incoming notifications and even locks up the capacitor buttons so nothing will interrupt your game, which is awesome if you're a gamer. Even though the S7 Edge is only about 1.3% thicker than the Note 5, Samsung was able to cram a 20% larger battery inside, which is very impressive. The Note 5 has great battery life already, lasting us all day with about 4.5 hours of screen on time. But yeah, the S7 Edge does last a little longer, and with light to moderate usage, I could easily make the phone last into my second day. With this being a new year and a new era for Samsung phones, the S7 Edge is running the newest version of Android, Android Marshmallow 6.0, while the Note 5 is still stuck at Android Lollipop 5.1.1 at the moment. And this new version of Android brings along a new version of TouchWiz on the S7 Edge that looks and performs a lot better. The recent app screen allows for more of the apps to be seen, and the notification pull down has a more toned down and neutral color scheme. This shouldn't matter too much though, because you can take advantage of the theme store found on both phones where you can change these colors. TouchWiz is just as customizable on the Note 5 as it is on the new S7 Edge, allowing for even the icon grid to be resized. Each big selling point for these phones come with some nice software features, like the S Pen has its own little menu for getting things done, and the curved size allow for swipe in menus and widgets. The S7 Edge allows for pretty much creating your own little home screen, sliding in where you can add contacts, apps, app actions, widgets, and even news. Samsung made a big change this year to their already great performing cameras. Instead of the 16 megapixel sensor found on the Note 5, we have a 12 megapixel sensor on the S7 Edge. Yes, that's a downgrade in sensor size, but the pixel sizes themselves are actually larger this time around, allowing for more light to come through, creating brighter photos. Also, we have a lower aperture of 1.7 instead of the Note 5's 1.9. Optical image stabilization can be found in both, along with the 5 megapixel wide angle selfie cam. First off, the main difference you'll notice is that the Note 5 shoots in a 16 to 9 aspect ratio at its full sensor size, while the S7 Edge is stuck to 4 to 3. In terms of quality though, the S7 Edge seems to be a little bit sharper with a tad more contrast, creating the ever so slightly better image here. Oftentimes, the Note 5 will overexpose a little more than the S7 Edge, which ends up losing a lot of detail in the highlights and makes the photo worse. The S7 Edge does a much better job at creating a perfectly exposed photo overall. Colors on the Note 5 appear to be a little warmer than the S7 Edge's, not necessarily making for a better or worse photo, but it's all up to preference. Of course, these differences are very minor, but when we get into low light, that all changes, with the S7 Edge outperforming the Note 5 by a large margin. While the Note 5 starts to shift colors to a less saturated look with greenish highlights and purple in the shadows, the S7 Edge creates a much more sharper image with more vibrant colors. For an extreme test, I took both phones into areas where I could barely see with the naked eye. The Note 5's representation is pretty close to what I could see in real life. 
pretty much nothing, unable to make out any detail. However, the S7 Edge's larger pixel size allow it to almost see in the dark. Suddenly, the picture is just better in every area. Better colors, brighter image, and much sharper. The Note 5 creates a very dark, purple, and smudgy photo in dark areas, while the S7 Edge brightens up the shot even brighter than the real scene itself, while creating a clearer image at the same time. The front-facing 5 megapixel wide-angle selfie camera differences are very minor, but they're still there with the Galaxy S7 Edge being a tad sharper and brighter in dark areas. In normal lighting conditions though, there is not much of a difference. The same differences can be found when it comes to video. There's a lot more grain with the Note 5's shot, and when moving into darker areas, you start to lose colors, sharpness, and you get that nasty purple hue in the shadows. On the S7 Edge, your video remains clear and more vibrant. The Note 5's camera seems to hunt around a lot more, and even when it does focus properly, it takes a lot longer than the S7 Edge. The S7 Edge focuses instantly onto objects, so you can be confident you'll never miss part of the action. Overall, the S7 Edge's camera is a huge upgrade over the Note 5's if you are someone who takes a lot of indoor and low-lit shots. Both phones were very similar in price when they were both released. But with the Note 5 being older, you can pick it up for a lot cheaper these days. But still, is it worth spending a bit more on the new S7 Edge over the Note 5? With the main differences being better battery life, water resistance, micro SD card slot, better processing power, and hugely improved camera, I would say the S7 Edge is definitely worth picking up over the Note 5. But of course, these features may not be needed by some users. But still, the S7 Edge seems to be an upgrade in every department, even its design. And that is the end of the video. Thank you very much for watching. Be sure to comment below and let me know which of these two phones do you prefer. Also, make sure to check out our website, androidauthority.com, for the full in-depth written comparison. And make sure you're subscribed here to Android Authority for more cool videos coming your way, because we are your source for all things Android.